It's coming. Jesus Christ, what's coming? Mega Deuce. A, a what? A, a mega what now? Mega Deuce. <laughs> <laughs> Poop jokes. Anime review. Big O is set in a futuristic neo-noir dome city called Paradigm. Forty years ago, all the people of Paradigm City came down with amnesia, and have since then been attacked by giant Godzilla-style monsters. Enter Roger Smith, voiced by the throat god, Steve Bloom. Roger is an ex-military police officer turned negotiator who... doesn't negotiate. Ever. Really. The series opens with Roger arranging a drop-off with some kidnappers in order to retrieve a girl named R. Dorothy Wainwright. And that's about the extent of the negotiating you're gonna be seeing in this series. But none of it matters because as we soon find out, the girl that he retrieved was not the real Dorothy, but instead, an android. And that the real Dorothy isn't even human. It's a giant mech, capable of leveling Paradigm City. But it's all good in the hood, cause Roger has a big giant city destroyer of his own. Mega Deuce. Every time, every time. Deuce. Big O! After fisting Mecha Dorothy to death, Roger invites Android Dorothy to come live in his manor. And that's where our story really begins. The duo, along with Roger's butler, Norman, and potential love interest, Angel, all fight together throughout the rest of the series to discover what happened all those years ago. The storyline's kind of good, even though it's kind of a Monster of the Week anime. But the thing that kept me going back all 26 episodes, episode after episode after episode after episode. Wasn't the storyline, wasn't the characters, it was the general feel of the show. It kind of comes off as like Cowboy Bebop meets Batman the Animated Series from the 90s, with a little bit of Lupin thrown in, kind of in the art, just mechs kind of sprinkled in. And it all really works well together to make a cohesive piece of animation. The Bebop thing I kind of thought was because Steve Bloom voices both main characters, like Spike and Roger from the series. But after doing a little more digging, I found out there's a lot more connections than that. Like the fact that most of the cast actually worked on Bebop beforehand. Or that Wendy Lee, the voice of Angel, the blonde thief in Big O, was also the voice of Faye Valentine from Bebop. Tetsuya Watanabe, the creator of Bebop, actually also directed like nine episodes of Big O, so a lot of the feel of Bebop transferred, including the jazz and the blues, all that stuff makes it into the soundtrack and you can totally get it from him. Speaking of the soundtrack, I dug the entire thing. The whole soundtrack is awesome. Except for the intro. I don't know, just something about repeating the words bingo, bingo, bingo. over and over didn't really come off to me as award-winning work. But the outro did grow on me. I like the outro now. It's turned out to be one of my favorite anime songs, even though I didn't like it at first. Now as for the similarities to Batman, sure there's the neo-noir style of the whole entire thing, and Roger's general look, but there's one more aspect that's a little bit more prominent. The fact that he's fucking Batman. Don't believe me? Fine. I think it's time to play a little game I like to call. Seriously though, this guy is fucking Batman. Number one, does he have dead parents? Yup. Number two, is he constantly wearing dark clothing for no reason? Yup. Number three, is he entirely too rich, young, and buff to be anything other than Batman? Yup. Number four, does he use a grappling hook? Mm-hmm. Number five, does he have a giant manor all to himself despite being a single bachelor? Well, look at that. Number six, badass British butler? You know it. Number seven, jet black supercar? Vroom vroom. Number eight, friends with the police chief? Yes, indeedy. Number nine, clown-faced villain? What do you think? Number ten, does he have a young apprentice that lives with him in the manor? Absolutely. Number eleven, does he have a will-they-won't-they they relationship with the blonde thief? <laughs> you bet your ass he does. Number 12. Does he have a will-they-won't-they they relationship with the apprentice living in the manor? <laughs> oh yeah, baby. And number 13. Does he have a giant technologically advanced fortress where he gets all his work done? <laughs> As a matter of fact, the voice actor for Norman the Butler is actually Alan Oppenheimer, who is also coincidentally the voice actor for Alfred in the Batman Superman movie Public Enemies. So take that as you will. All in all, I dug this show a lot, but I'm warning you right now. If you're the kind of person that needs all the answers just handed to you, this might not be the show for you. I don't want to I don't want to spoil anything here, 
But what I will say is that the end doesn't do the work for you. You gotta think it out. It's a well-structured story with more than enough clues to... I was in the middle what was that? Night. What What the... What the fuck? What What, what was... What is... Th why? What? What is... Is that... Is that Brooklyn and Broadway from Disney's Gargoyles? How, how do I even remember their names? What? What? How, why are they... What? What is going on? Anyways, the show is good. The voice acting and soundtrack are great. Absolutely. The voice acting and soundtrack, some of the best dub I've ever seen. And season two takes a serious step up in production value when it comes to animation. This is because it was actually canceled in about 2000, 2001, but it was so popular in America that Cartoon Network actually bankrolled the second season to finish it off. So the second season, a little more money, a little more pretty. The show, however, can get a little repetitious. I mean, I had to watch a few episodes again just because I spaced the hell out. It's just... A few of the episodes kind of feel like the same episode. It feels like you're seeing the same thing again. And like I said, the ending's a little open to interpretation, to say the least. And the theme song can get on your damn nerves. But if you like Bebop or you like Batman and you kind of dig the noir feel, give it a look. Even if you don't like mechs, the show doesn't revolve around mechs enough to make it a mech anime. It's kind of more of a mystery. And I prefer it that way, honestly. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe. And hell, while you're at it, might as well comment, right? Check out the annotations, my other videos. Yeah, give you something to do. Go ahead, crazy kids.